Welcome to One Touch Ministries Second Our Home Gathering, uh, where our apostolic uh, overseers is Pastor Shannon and Prophetess Nadija Young, and where that I myself am the campus minister uh, here, uh, Henry Jackson, Minister Henry Jackson. Which today everyone is, you know, is around inside the living room, you know, watching. You know their games and favorite movies, Christmas movies. So I and so uh, everyone had decided that they wanted to do something else. So you know I have wanted to actually to keep the ball going and by actually wanting to do Christmas service uh, myself inside of my own you know bedroom. I definitely like that that Christmas tree there. So yeah, so you know uh, yeah, this kind of gives like a Christmas. Have a vibe to it now. R reading of scripture, so I'm just gonna pick uh, uh one one of my favorite scriptures inside the Bible here. Maybe we just re uh read it just from verse one all the way to verse five. So it's and I will be reading from the from the uh New Living Translation. And it say, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give you bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice to the kind he will find it acceptable. So this is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Be because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body that we are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. Okay, and so we're going to uh, go into the prayer uh, time of, of service. Dear Heavenly Father, yeah, we, yeah, I do come to you boldly uh, to you, to your throne of grace. And I pray, Lord, that you do touch everyone's hearts, minds, souls, and spirit. Yeah, let everyone that, that have came on this service, that they be blessed from within their hearts. By receiving you, your spirit, and by also by uh, allowing you to enter into their lives for those that have not known you. Heavenly Father, I do also pray that you do uh, lay hands on our sick and that you do uh, uh, um, lay, lay hands on anyone that is in, in any lack uh, thereof. Um, also, Heavenly Father, um, yeah, also like to pray for our children that they go back to school and you know uh that their minds on the on the right things father god um that that i do also like to pray for for the world that it has peace that we do all grow in peace with one another in harmony in unity and and by expressing your love to one another, um, in, in the wonderful name of Jesus, and just start saying, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So we're going, going, to, uh, going to praise and worship. I'm going to sing uh, two of one, one, one of my favorite songs. What can wash my sin away, my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Jesus. All oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. One more time. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring new life. Words on the wings of a morning, the dark night will fade away. If you speak to my heart, one more time, speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring new life, words on the wings of a morning, the dark night will fade away. If you speak to my heart, speak to my heart, Lord. Today, give us your holy word. It, uh, see, it's it, it, it just vague on me real words. I don't know what to do. I don't want to be alone. Uh, give us your holy word. Is just something else in there. I don't know what to do. So speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. One more time. Speak to my heart. So we're going to have our, our uh, testimony part of the service that yeah, I do, you know, thank the Lord for, you know, yeah, allowing me to see, see you're yeah, the age of 36 and still in my right mind and still, you know, I want, I, uh, I want to say in my health, um, yeah, for me, which would be, you know, you're maturing, uh, in it in the stage of my life um that I do thank the Lord for you know um putting those people around me with where they help to I want to say ground me um and, and also you know I, I thank the Lord for you know even the people that are against me for those people also teach me how to be humble and thankful for what the Lord has brought into my life and continuing to bring into my life. And so you know, I'm just thankful all around that my family's uh, overall is in good health, um, that they also, uh, um, that, that they is also, you know, doing well, the kids is in school. Um, but they do need some, need some, you know, whoopings here, you know, here and there, but, no, other than that, you know, uh, yeah, I think that they got a good head on, on their shoulders. Now I'm going to actually uh, dive into the word here, the sermon part of the service, which I know you probably came here to see. If you have your Bibles in, go with me to the book of Matthew, 25, 
verse 14 through 27, as it reads, It is also like a man going off on an extended trip. He called his servants together and, and delegated responsibilities to one he had. To one he gave five thousand dollars, to another two thousand, and to a third one one thousand, depending on their abilities. Then he left. Right, right off, the first servant went to work and doubled his master's investment. His second did the same. But the man with the single thousand dug a hole and carefully buried his master's money. Verse 19 reads, And after a long absence, the master of those three servants came back and settled up with them. So the one which he given $5,000 showed him that he had doubled his investment, which means he made 10000 And his master commanded him, well, speaking to him, saying uh, in response to his work that he put in, he said, good work, th that you did your job well. From now on, be my partner. Verse 22 continues to said, the servant with the 2000 showed how he also had doubled his master investments, which means he doubled it to 4,000. And his masters commanded him by speaking to him, saying, uh, good work, you did your job well. From now on, be my partner. And verse 24 continues, said the servant, which he given 1,000, said, master, I know you have high standards and hate careless ways that you demand the best and make no allowances for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you, so I found a good hid hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound, down to the last cent. And the master was furious. And he responded by saying, that's, that's a ter terrible way to live. It is cr it's credible to live cautiously like that. So if you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? So the least you could have done would have been to invest the sum with the bankers, where at least I would have gotten a little interest. And so we hear, um, you know, a master giving his servants, I want to say, uh, their own portions of according to their abilities, as the scripture says. And so. As this master was, well, how this goes is Jesus was telling a story. And so this is one of the stories he told. He was telling about the master giving his three servants these gifts, uh, which this translation referred to it as, as money. So the the important part I want you to get from this is, is not the money. The part I want you to get is the part that 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 we need to understand that when when God gives us something um it could be something that we want it could be something that that he know that we're able to carry that we're able to manage very well and so he gives it to us because he entrusts us with those things and so when he entrusts us with those things he's expecting you know for you to yeah, at least double what you, you know, what he have given to you, um, as the, you know, as, as the, as the first two have done, uh, 
what what that symbolizes is you know is uh yeah accountability and so one of the stewardshipness things one of the most crucial parts of being a steward is you have to understand your your accountability inside of this whole thing because um yeah you have to know you know what you have inside of your hands and you have to know how to use what is in your hand? What is in your hands? And so, if you do do not know what is in your hands and how to use what is in your hands, then you're not going going to understand the power that that you have. And so, there are so many people that that are in this world, like the like the third servant, who's just too nervous to do anything because they feel like they don't, you know, we can pair up, you know, like like. You know, just because they receive more than me or just because this person have more connections than I did or just because this person have a college degree or just because this person have, I want to say, uh, uh, references on their resume. So that's how they got that job. You know, that's how they got there, you know. And so yeah, instead of them understanding the, the talent that they that they possess themselves, that their talent, that even though it may look tiny, that even though it may look small, it is a big, it is a huge deal. So um, here, so here with the last servant was referring to, you know, or he said, oh, uh, I don't want to, you know, do anything with it. And the reason why I wanted to point this out, Blast, it's because, yeah, I do really, really want you to understand here that, yeah, you shouldn't be afraid what to, to use what the Lord gave you. Um, and, I, and I do specifically mean that if if you know the Lord gave you a talent to sing, you know, and, and if it's, you know, uh, I want to say world and music, then you do that according to, to what God has given you the talent and the ability to. And so I've known personally so many, you know, musicians that have, you know, decided to sing gospel just because they think that that they're doing a godly thing. But in honest respect, no, like when the Lord gives you a certain gift and he gave it to you in that way, he expected for you to use it in that exact way. And so it is a purpose why he designed each of us a particular way. You know, if, you know, uh, and so if you if you would think about everyone, you know, if everyone looked like like me, if everyone dressed like me, if everyone talked like me, and everyone walked like me, if they all preached and and did everything like me, then you wouldn't be able to distinguish the real Henry from the fake ones. And so, you know, one of the things that I want want to make very point here. Which is why I'm explaining it like this, because I need you to understand that your accountability, you know, of, of who you are rides on you using, on you being you exactly who God created you to be. So then that's how come with people who know me, uh, you know, even though if you look like me or you talk like me, walk like me, whatever, but the people who really know the real me know, you know, oh, Henry don't dress like that. Oh, Henry don't speak like that. He don't you know, uh, uh, walk like that. He definitely don't talk like that. He definitely don't, you know, minister like that. He definitely don't do music like that. And so, you know, everyone who actually knows me, they knows me for who I am and for, for, I, I won't want to uh, use this very loosely, but for what I do, you know, does not make me who I am. You know, but it actually gives the the character of of who I am. So, in other words, I I can change my character anytime I want. So, however, however, but for me to know, you know, how important that that is to me, to also to other people that is around me. You know, just like the same with like these servants, the first and two servants understood who who they were. They knew what they strengths was what they weaknesses was and so they for they didn't go and take their 
money and go and invest into something where they know that they don't have a real gift at doing. And so, you know, they stick with what they knew and they invested in that and, you know, money came back. But the last man, he, he decided he, he wanted it's because because he, he was looking at his master's, I want to say, at expectation. So he, you know, looked at, at, at the pressures of, you know, what if, you know, I don't measure up. And and I just want you to, to be able to have the faith in knowing that you will have the faith, you, that you will uh, measure up according to how God wants you to measure up. And so there, there are a lot of times in my life where I preach sermons where I thought I was a complete, you know, babbling buffoon. And, but the people who heard the sermon uh, you know, said to me, oh my God, that was the most powerful word that you ever preach, preach. And I'm just like, like what? Like that's the most terrible word that, that I ever gave. You know, yeah, I feel like I needed to go go back and re and re practice that some more. Yeah, before I actually you know did that, but but even but they even just go to show even when you even put forth that little effort that the Holy Spirit will do the rest for you and he he will make it come out the way it, it, it was intended to come out. Your gift was intended to come out. And so therefore it can still touch and, and, and enlighten other people in the way and how he wanted to touch and enlighten other people. So that's why it is important for you to not not to dig your your talent and just put it in the you know graveyard and say, you know, um yeah, forget it. You know. Uh matter of fact, no, I think I heard Will Smith quote someone when he said that the richest Place place on earth is not the not the uh, treasure uh, department. It's not the banks. It's not you know all these other you know high main places where you normally will find diamonds and gold and all that. That the most richest place in the world is the graveyard because there are thousands of ideas that have never been birthed and you know that could have been worth millions or or billions or trillions. And we don't even know. And, you know, and, and so, you know, um, no, I just wanted to, you know, uh, uh, give some word that, that occurred in word. Uh, when you are given a responsibility, would you please make sure that you understand that you are accountable for it? Um, all right. So uh, account accountability means that you are that you are obligated to explain justify and take responsible for one's actions and to answer to someone such as a person with more authority. Uh, uh, accountability is often used in the context of individuals taking responsibility for their actions. So it is also often transparent. And, and to say, and also wrote down here, say accountability means someone who is accountable is completely responsible for what they do and must be able to give a satisfactory reason for it. Said, so, okay, so one of the things about the, about the last serving here, now I have wanted to to say about that, um, yeah, accepting uh, uh, accountability is, is the quickest way with to mature, uh, not by aging or, or your age or by how much, you know, uh, I want to say experience or years that you put in to something. So your accountability is a measure by that, your accountability well, well, your quickest way to reach, to to reach accountability, um, uh, is is through um, uh, your maturing. So that's what accountability is. Accountability is what allows people to tell you. Well, allows people to show you that you are, um, you're mature. 
right? So, and so, so don't expect to get results until you learn how to become, how, how to overcome yourself. Oh, that's another one. Don't, don't, don't expect you to get results uh, until you learn how to overcome yourself. So just like, like the last servant, how he couldn't get over himself. And that's the reason why he couldn't use his talents. Well, that's the same thing. So don't expect to, to get, I want to say, uh, don't, don't expect to get results until you overcome you, you yourself. And, and also, I wanted the last note I wanted to add here that you are first accountable. We are first accountable to ourselves before we are accountable for others. As I'm going to speak into your life, the sevenfold blessings, uh, the sevenfold blessings, it speaks, I speak uh, blessings of one, health for you and your family. N number two, de deliverance from any habits that you have in your life. Number three, peace to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Uh, number four, salvation to any friends, hurting, lonely, bereaved, or confused. Number six, finances, debt cancellation, prosperity, economic empowerment to all of God's people according to his riches and glory. And number seven, the, I speak blessings of anointings and promotion in your life to complete your assignment, to move forward in your purpose. If there are any announcements for the day, uh, I do uh, only have, uh, I think, uh, one announcement. Uh, uh, the announcement that I have for this uh, Christmas uh Morning is uh well afternoon is yeah uh yeah we had tragically lost one of my cousins on on my father's side uh he's a, a young man um I was not told the actual name of him but I do ask that you send out prayers to the Fr Frazier family once again now we're gonna do the benediction part of the service. So if you have your Bibles and go with me to the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 24. Then I'm going to read verse 24, 25, and 26 in the message translation. Uh, ready? Uh, read. It say, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God smile on you. May God gift you. May God look you full in the face and make you prosper.